This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, here we go. June 2013, F7. Question 1. It's a question called Paradigm. And the time is... 12.40 Requirement Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position 31st March 2013 We have a strategy of buying struggling businesses reversing their decline and then selling a monitor profit within a short period of time We're hoping to do this with Strata As an advisor to a prospective purchaser of Strata, explain any concerns you would raise about basing an investment decision on the information available in Paradigm's consolidated financial statements and Strata's entity financial statements. Ah. I would always do Part B first. It doesn't seem to me to be dependent upon Part A. It's five marks. I'm going to spend two and a half minutes planning what I would think. It's a sort of generic answer, really. What's the problem with relying on financial statements of a consolidation uh, and the separate financial statements of a separate entity? So part B, just consolidations. This is long-winded note. This is not what I would write in my plan. I would reduce it down to very minimum single-word bullet points, ready to fill it out in the nine minutes available for part B. But consolidations hide the facts relating specifically to a subsidiary and therefore um, the consolidation will hide an overdrawn position And they will also hide poor performance. In addition, there's the problem with related parties. Because the subsidiary is under the control of the parent and is being told what to do and what to buy. I've not read the question, so uh, there will probably be some intergroup trading. Uh, just have a quick look through the question there. Point number two, each month since acquisition, Paradigm sales to Strata consistently 4.6. We've marked these up at 15%. We had one month supply. There's a PUP involved. There normally is. And Paradigm's normal, oh look at that, Paradigm's normal markup is 40%. We've got one month's worth in purchases and in inventory, but there are Five months, October 12 was the acquisition date. So we've got five months of purchases. It's 4.6 million, so cost plus profit is selling price. And it's 15% in its markup. So 1,515 of 4.6, this is a PUP calculation. That's um, 600,000 PUP. But if we were to look at cost of 100 plus markup of 40, selling price of 140, uh, then we're looking at 4.6 million. 4 million is the cost. 40% of that is 1.6 million. And it should therefore have been 560. So instead of five months at 40 profit, we're actually getting five months at 1.6 profit, which is five months difference, five months at 120, 1 1.2 million, that's 6 million understated costs. So the profit for Strata, I'm just looking at Strata now, the profit for Strata is 8 million for the year at 
me just check on this. Yeah, point number one. At the date of acquisition, we produced a draft statement which showed it had made a loss of two million at that date. So they must have made a profit of ten million in the last six months. Well, six million of that ten million profit is fictitious. It's it's fabricated. It's created as a result of Paradigm selling to Strata. So we've we've hidden the true results. Five months purchases at one point two million extra costs would lead to a fall in strata's profits by six million and they only made 10 million in the second half of the year so that's going to be a big hit for them what else can i think about for this part b if we rely on strata's individual results then we're going to get a better reflection of strata's management when we eliminate this six million created profits. In addition, do I remember the word aggressive? I remember the word aggressive. No. In addition, paradigms Let's say aggressive. Oh, it's there in part B, wasn't it? Revising struggling strategy of buying struggling businesses. Aggressive policy is bound to lead to fabricated results. Manipulation, I want to put in there somewhere. Um, there's another word which I've forgotten. Manipulated. All right, we'll leave it at manipulation. That's going to give me the basis of the um, problems as an advisor to prospective purchase. Any concerns I would raise, and paradigm paradigms results itself. Give no indication of strata's performance, the consolidated results. And that would do me for part B. I want to get into part A though. This is the, the area where students would tend to, uh, to be looking. I'm going to read that opening paragraph. This is the basis of the acquisition. It typically is. It's either the opening introductory paragraph in a question or it's point number one in the notes to the question. So I'm going to get into this. First of all, Toby acquired da da da. Two shares in Paradigm for five in Strata and a hundred dollar loan note for every thousand acquired. We've not recorded any, although we do have other 10% loan notes already in issue. Market value of Paradigm shares, that's telling me the market value of Paradigm shares is two dollars. That's uh, a share for share exchange, which I already know, but I'll need that information for the goodwill calculation. Then at the date of acquisition, point number one. At the date of acquisition, Strata produced a draft statement showed it had made a loss after tax as at date of acquisition. And we acquired on 1st October, we're running up to 31st March, so it's six months and six months. Well, I can start with working one straight away, can't I? Paradigm Strata. 75%, 25%, and it's a six month pre, six month post. That will do me for working one. Also, date of acquisition and fair value exercise, yes, okay, that's going to have to happen. And plan to remaining economic life. Policy value NCI at the fair value. So, if there is any goodwill impairment, then the non controlling interest is going to take their share. Share price of 120 is representative of fair value. We've already done the PUP calculation. 
but I'll do it again. The Stratus current account balance with Paradigm was 2.8. This did not agree with Paradigm's equivalent receivable because there's a payment of 900,000 on the way. Well, that's easy enough. The financial asset equity investments for Paradigm and Strata are carried at their fair values at 1st April. As of 31st March, these had fair values of 7.1 and 3.9. There were no impairment losses within the group during the year ended 31st March. Okay, we're working to then, goodwill. Cost of acquisition. It's a share for share exchange. We acquired 75% of the shares of Strata, which were 20,000. And f we issued two for five. So for every five, we issued two. And the value of our shares is $2 each. So if I just work that out, that's 15,000, 3,000, 6, 12,000. That's one. 12,000. That's the value of our shares which we've issued. In addition, we're going to issue some loan notes for every thousand acquired. Well, we acquire 75% of 20,000, so we've acquired 15,000. If I divide by 1,000 and multiply by 100, that's the loan notes. That's 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 1,500. I must remember to split that into shares and premium. That's 6,000 shares, 6,000 premium. Because none of that has been recorded. It always amazes me that Paradigm with $47 million worth of property, plant and equipment, total assets of $92 million, $66 million worth of equity, and they've not managed to record the acquisition, which is pretty straightforward, but anyway. That's the way it works in these exams. NCI, they have 25% of 20,000, so they have 5,000 shares, and they're valued at a dollar twenty. Point number one at the last paragraph in point number one, which is 6,000. So total value is 19,500. And now I need the net fair value of the subsidiary net assets at date of acquisition. And that's made up of shares. Incidentally, I would do this abbreviation like this, shares. I would put sh and we've got retained losses brought forward, which is four. And then they'd also sustained a loss of two million as at date of acquisition. For six months loss, at date of acquisition is another two million. Uh, fair value. And Strout is now so equal to their carrying amounts, including the Strout. Oh, that's interesting. That means I'm not going to time a portion the gain in the financial asset. With the exception item of plant, have fair value of three million below. So fair value of plant is three million down. And the plant had a remaining economic life of three years at October 12. And I've no doubt that these figures have not been written into the, no, they haven't. They've not been written into the strata figures. So that will give me um, fair value of net assets of 11. Gives me goodwill of 8,005. I'll just check again to see that there's been no impairment. Point number five, there's no impairment losses within the group. So 8.5 is the goodwill. That means I can now go into the PUP calculation. Cost plus profit equals selling price. I've done this once already. The markup is 15. The, it is a markup, so it's 100% on cost. Therefore, selling price is 115. 15 over 115 times closing inventory, which is given to us there in point number two. We've got one month's supply of these goods. And 15, that's 600,000 PUP. And it's in paradigm. So the adjustment is therefore going to be reduce inventory by 600,000. 
and increase cost of sales by 600,000. Got those the wrong way around, haven't I? Uh huh. That will do for that. Then I've got cash in transit. And the amount is 900,000. Now that has been recorded by Strata. It's not yet been received by Paradigm. So in Paradigm, I'm going to increase cash by 900,000 and I'm going to decrease receivables by 900,000. <coughs> and now they will agree. It tells you it didn't agree because of this, this amount. So now in the console, I'm going to decrease payables by 2.8 million and decrease receivables by 2.8 million. <coughs> That's nearly it, isn't it? That's nearly it. Offset date of acquisition can do a fair value. Value in CI at fair value. PUP, cash in transit. Just got the financial asset equity of Paradigm and Strata. In Paradigm and Strata, this is point number four. In Paradigm and Strata, the fixed assets 7,005 and 3,002. 3,002 is all post acquisition. And we're going to revalue at 31st March, at consolidation date, we're valuing those at 7, 1, and 3, 9. So there's a 700 increase in strata and there's a 400 decrease in paradigm. I can't think of anything else. Is there anything I've forgotten? Okay, working three. Further question. Always start at this consolidated retained earnings. Further question, always start with further question. Further question in paradigm, we've got 19.2 and 7.4, which is 26.6. In strata, we've now got 4,000. We have 4,000 loss brought forward, 8,000 for the year. So it's a 4,000 net surplus. And then I've got the adjustments to make. I've got a PUP, that was in paradigm. I've got a gain on the financial assets, which is a 400 loss in fact for Paradigm and a 700 gain for Strata. I've got the plants, which has not been adjusted. That's 3,000 down. But we will have been charging depreciation on that excess 3,000. And the depreciation, we were told it had a three-year life left, an economic life of three years at 1st October. And now that, therefore, is 3 million divided by 3. That's 1 million, but it's only for half a year. So 500,000. Now, we have charged 500,000 too much <coughs> depreciation, and therefore I'm going to add it back. <coughs> 25,006. 2002. That's at today's date. Take away the PREAC, and the PREAC I'll find in working too. There it is. It's those three. So that's uh, 9,000 retained earnings or retained losses, 9,000, which gives me a 6,800. Right, six thousand eight hundred. No, I'm taking that loss off, so that it must have made eleven thousand two hundred. That's the profit. That was the pre-acquisition loss. Therefore, they must have made eleven thousand two hundred post act. Well, that's a tricky little one, isn't it? Because I always take away the pre-acquisition, but that doesn't make any sense. Our share of that is seventy-five percent. 75% of 11,200, uh, well, 25% is 2,8, so it's 8,004. And that gives me 33, 34,000. 
which I think is the, because there's no impairment. I'll write that in just to be clear. Then working 4A, which is the NCI on the balance sheet, I always do put the percentage in just to show the marker what, where I'm working or what I'm working on. The value at date of acquisition, we were told it's back in working 2. Value at date of acquisition is 6,000. A share of post ac I've just worked that out, 25% of 11,002, which is 2008. So the NCI is 8,008, less their share of impairment, but there is no impairment. So 8,008 is the NCI. That, I think, puts me in a position where I can now fasten it all up. Goodwill is in working two. I've forgotten the figure. Goodwill working to 8,005. PPE. Now we've got that adjustment to make, haven't we? So it's 47.4 plus 25.5 minus 3 plus 0.5. That's seventy two nine sixty nine nine seventy thousand four hundred. Tell me if I'm wrong. Fixed asset financial asset, not fixed asset, financial assets is now seven one and three two, which is ten three. Is that right? Someone on three nine. Someone on three nine. Which is eleven. Okay. Inventory from the question is twenty point four and eight point four, but there's a PUP in there, so minus point six. That's twenty eight point two. You check my counts because I'm not using a calculator. Receivables for the question is 14, 8 and 9, but then we've taken away the cash in transit to 0.9 and then we've taken away the intergroup of 2.8. So that's uh, 6, 2, 5, 3, 19, 20,100, I think. Bank. Is 2.1 plus that 900, which is in on route. That's three. I'm not going to set it off against the overdraft because unless it's at the same bank, and there is an agreement for the purposes of calculating interest that we should apply set off, then we shouldn't set off. So assets are 78, 88, 89, 109, 117, 120, 140, 141, 200. And that should be the total assets. We'll see in a minute, won't we? Shares is always only ever the parent. That's 40,000. But we've issued 6,000 new shares, so it's 46,000. And there was a premium of 6,000 on that new issue. Retained earnings, that's in working three. Retained earnings working three, 34,000. NCI is in working 4A. And that was 8.8 eight from memory. Yep, 8.8. 78 in 94,008. 10% loan, long term debt, is 8,000, but we've also issued. I'm going to have to go up here. I can't remember it. We've also issued 1.5. That's 9.5. That's 104,300. Current liabilities, we've got payables. That's 17,6 and 13,000, but we've taken away 2.8. So that's um, 14, 8, 27, 8. 
subject to you agreeing. The overdraft, 9.1. I'm just going to skip through. Have I forgotten anything? No, I don't think so. Let's see how we are anyway. 120, 31, 40, 141, 200. Does that agree? Yes, it does. And that is 13.05. We started. That's 25 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, there's some tricky bits in there. There's some bits that maybe we hadn't expected, but it's pretty much a straightforwardish type question. Did I get five marks for part A? Hide the facts, hide an overdrawn position, hide poor performance. Related part A, that shouldn't be a problem, it should be um, disclosed both within Paradigm and in Strata. Five months purchases, that, that's six million. Paradigm, sorry, not Paradigm, Strata. The Strata figure was, what, 8,000, 10,000 for the year, wasn't it? 10,000 for the half year. Well, more than half of that was, thank you very much, because presumably Strata would normally have had to pay cost plus 40%. So by that manipulation, um, distortion was the other word. That was the word I was looking for. Creativity. I think I've already used the word creativity in there. Um, yeah, I think I could probably get five marks for that. And I do balance. I don't know if it's right, but I do balance. Those fair value through profit and loss, really. Financial assets. Fair values, yeah. Okay, so that's question one.